much, uh, first of all, our distinguished speakers for coming, and I'm very happy that at all our discussions we are both women and men, because in our club we consider there is no difference between men and women by default. So thank you so much also, uh, Bill Lashi, that you gave me the floor as uh, the first speaker. And I would like to share with you something very interesting. Like a great start for today's session. What would be your message to women in India? Oh my goodness. Well, I, there's a role for you, right? I mean, there there is a place for everyone in this industry. So find what your passion is. You know, you don't have to be a tech, you may be a technology expert, you may be a marketing expert, you may be a finance expert. This industry needs all of those experience and skill sets and so many more. So yeah, figure out what your passion is and how you want to contribute and go for it. Well, my Indian co colleagues, they are leading this industry. They are just doing great job. And you know, just like a, we have so many creative, enthusiastic Indian colleagues, you know, just like supported, supporting this industry network. So thank you for everything you do and for the empowering women initiatives across the world, but especially India and all the support from Dr. Rashi. Uh, you're doing, doing great by being a role model and leader there. Uh, you know, just like future leaders are growing and you know just like empowering by discovering their own potential because you know industry will change thanks to your support and we are doing all of these together and i just say to any young woman out there don't give up don't say don't get no maybe it's not now maybe we just have to try later but don't give up hope and when it does get rough go take a bath or right? do something for yourself it doesn't have to be expensive something nice, but then come back and give it there your best because eventually you'll win. If you don't quit, you'll win. I promise you that. It was just a message from other colleagues uh, from the United States. So first was uh, Julia Hamm, the president of SIPA, the organization that unites all the utilities, the biggest companies in the United States. Second was uh, our front Sima Yakar from Turkey, very active in Turkey in the empowering women organizations. And third one was uh, Clintec Mama, yes. So uh, the only woman in the United States that owns a wind farm on private, yes. So um, with this, you know, like motivational speeches, let's start our discussion. So I give a floor to Dr. Rashi. This is our second event in India, and I hope that this is one of the next ones. Thank you, Thomas. A very warm welcome to one and all present here on the dais, off the dais. Everyone is equally important out here. Now, we've been talking of women empowering the clean tech decade. Why do we need a gender representation, a gender balance? Is because there is an energy transition that's happening. Now, what do all we mean by energy? Energy is beyond electricity. We all see energy, we all relate to energy. Just, we have been used to understanding energy in the form of electricity, but it is beyond that. I am energy, you are energy, everybody in this room has energy. And we need to understand our energies, we need to discover our energies. And once we realize what amount of energy we are, that's when we will transform the entire world. So now is the time to discover each one of ourselves, transform this world to a better energy, to a peaceful energy, to a happy energy, which is missing in the current scenario. And, and why is it missing? Because we have focused on the wrong part of the energies. And now is the time to transition, to transient into a new form of energy. And why women are required? I mean, we all know the qualities that women can bring on the table, but we need more subtleness, we need more happiness, and we need more positivity. And it, why it is clean tech? Because we have to clean our energies. We have to clean our energies in every aspect not just in electricity by using renewable energies, not in, uh, you know, in the auto sector by having just EVs, but also clean our energies in this clean tech decade. 
we have to think right we have to think equal we have to think positive and that is when this challenge will be accomplished that energy is transformed so we all today here whoever have gathered it does not matter the number does not matter at all what matters is what we take away today from here what are we going to instill in ourselves to change for everyone else who comes in our contact so one thing i loved from covid was the contact tracing so now i'm doing the energy tracing from each one of us each one of us here has a different energy so let's gather all our energies create a wonderful uh, and our wonderful one hour today of a very broad energy that we can transform translate and transient to everybody which we come in contact to in the entire day and not just today but from now on so that is the energy transition we have to create here so with this let's begin our deliberations of understanding um, a perspective from each one of us that why women are so important to lead this transition in this clean tech decade so the first and foremost you want to add okay <laughs> i would add Uh, there's this. I, I would add uh, because uh, Rashi was saying that the women should uh, lead the clean tech decade. Yes, women should lead the clean. I tech. should add together with men. Okay, you add together with men. I don't mind taking you along in your clean tech journey. <laughs> okay, so we begin with Raj because Raj really talks about right to energy. So Raj, what do you really think that right to energy is, and how we can have a gender balance, gender equality, and a good participation from women around in the industry so dr rashi i am very inspired by you in fact you are one of my role models but then before that we want to th there's one question from my side why are we all working in energy sector kyun kaam kar rahe hain sector mein what is the necessity of working in this sector why is government of india investing so much of money and energy why is state governments investing so much in this sector why is you know united nation concerned we have so many international agencies i am legal advisor to international solar alliance there are several other legal agencies working in energy sector why are we doing so much effort in energy sector what is the challenge which we are solving actually so remember there are two three facts which i am saying very briefly if, uh, you know i have two minutes 1.2 billion people across the world do not have access to electricity we are all blessed we are sitting here in ac room and talking to each other yeah all right and it is brought maybe it is broadcast across the world 3.2 billion people across the world do not have access to clean fuel to cook food so mothers cook food using cow dung cake wood and when they cook food for us they inhale all the poisonous gases and they don't inhale the poisonous gases alone the child the girl sitting from 1 day to 10 years also inhales all the poisonous gases so world bank says that 5 million people every year die because of this problem in covid in last 2 years that many people have not died remember but every year because of the energy situation this will happen third if in india the per capita power consumption is 500 units to 1500 units per person per annum depending on which state we are living then in north america and europe the per capita power consumption is 15000 to 30000 per person per annum you see this gap this gap is called energy poverty all right but then uh, and we started finding solution and we had a discussion with thomas also and uh, with uh, dr rashi also and we started you know uh, let us be part of solution not the part of problem it is very easy to blame somebody else actually let us take responsibility let us own responsibility and women have taken that responsibility you know throughout ages so we said let us do something and be part of the solution one of the solutions which we found out is that right to energy should become fundamental right in all the constitutions of the world and it should also be included in the universal declaration of as a human right so our call for action for everyone is that the discussion in the parliament discussion in public policy bodies discussion in conferences should start about making right to energy mainstream all right so maybe uh, this is my uh, you know opening remarks uh, back to you dr rashi Yeah. Wow! Thanks. That that was fantastic. So, Ritu, uh, you have been in the forefront uh, with the solar and EPCs, and you know, getting into the route. But we still do not see a lot of 
young girls, women taking up these challenging roles. What do you think needs to be changed or aligned in terms to get more women representation at all levels in the uh, in the ecosystem? Uh, of course, uh, having said that, just as a preamble, the gender imbalance at the workplace is not only a problem of. Uh, okay, it's not only a problem related to the energy sector or the solar sector. Uh, it's a little more pronounced in energy. I think even historically going back, you know, even the common forms of energy that we use, electricity or uh, fuels, drilling, mining, you know, all very male jobs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then there's a lot of engineering, right, uh, re uh, related roles. A lot of jobs have their roots in engineering. Again, a sector where the gender ratio is not very uh, favorable to women for various reasons. Uh, India, ironically, STEM uh, qualification, you know, about 32% is women. But I think it's a little skewed more towards, you know, the medicine, nursing, uh, uh, academia side is well better represented. When it comes to engineering, I think, Rashi, we have had this discussion at another panel that IT, computer sciences, electricals, they have, again, a better representation. And when it comes to, you know, the kind of engineering jobs that form... Oh, uh, engineering jobs like mechanical, mechanical civil, civil, electricals, you, will not see you don't find as many women, okay? Uh, having said that, in this scenario, everybody who graduates, whether it's from a, a college or a diploma, even from school, most of these people, so at least college and diploma, anybody who has some sort of a degree or diploma, uh, it's a very rare woman who does not begin formal work. They all do start, right? It's how we lose women also at various points of their lives, in their careers, to never mind how broad that pyramid was, you know. And in some sectors, the pyramid is broader. If you look at advertising and marketing, there are far more women at the workplace at junior levels. But if I look at the boardroom, the percentage of women, whether it's in an energy company or in an advertising company or a university, it is as abysmal. It's 1 to 3%. So the problem is far more complex. Uh, so just addressing the fact that more women need to study engineering or more women need to go into science, more women need to apply for jobs. Yes, of course they do. But that problem is not going to get solved unless we address what is it that is causing women to drop out of the workforce. You know, how do you shatter that glass ceiling and how do you ensure a more equitable solution that keeps even the ones who are there engaged for their useful lives. But do you think, uh, Ritu, that uh, you see, like you were mentioning before, uh, this old energy industries, yes, which were male industry because, you know, to work in the mine, you had to be a strong guy, yes? But what we noticed uh, that with clean technologies, actually, uh, there is more opportunities for women, yes, because you don't need to use your muscles, yes, to work. And do you agree with this? And, uh, and Absolutely. And in, in my organization, you know, it's, it's very easy because I have more of what I would call an administrative job, right? Uh, but we hire a lot of young engineers and non-engineers in the field. And uh, a lot of solar projects are constructed in extreme rural areas. Because, you know, you would go to where there is accessibility, but where land is cheap. And where land is cheapest is where it is furthest away from civilization. We have women deployed there. Uh, you know, obviously it is our requirement, ours, the administration, everybody's requirement to make the workplace suitable and safe for everyone, including women. Never mind what it costs us. So we do that. We make it happen. We have women there who do structural design, who are working in electricals and many other fields. Of course, the percentage, again, is low, but we ensuring that we do that. It's not just, you know, let's get them in HR and marketing and other such jobs where you're not going to be have, you're not going to have to be out in the field. 
instead of saying women should not go out at night, and this is something we hear all the time in countries like India, you know, it's not safe to be out alone at night. So stay home. It's like, no, I don't have to stay home. You have to ensure that the streets are safe for me. You're identifying the wrong problem and giving me the wrong solution. You know, I'll add on to what you said, Ritu. I was just coming yesterday to Delhi on and on flight, I met one of a very senior female, uh, uh, like she's a senior like us, you know, many, many years in the industry. And the funny thing was to go back, she, she asked us who would be flying back on 29th, okay? I'm just giving you this example, I will not name the person. And I still, she felt so insecure to travel alone from Noida to Delhi airport. She felt so insecure. She said, I will, she was okay to take a 2 a.m. flight just because a other group of people are going, uh, you know, on the same route. She's okay to take a 2 a.m. flight, miss the whole night, but she will not stay back in Noida alone and go travel to Delhi. So when you talk of safety, I mean, such a senior person who travels the globe for exhibitions but does not feel safe between Noida and Delhi is a question mark to all of us that what safety are we creating for our women out here. So I agree completely with what Ritu has said. We have to make our streets, our habitats much more safer for everybody. Let it be women or men. A victim could be anybody on street for multiple exactly. reasons. The solutions that you have need to address the real problem. You know, if if a car seat belt is faulty, yes, of course, for the time being, drive slow. Yeah, but driving slow is not the solution to faulty seat belts. You need to fix those seat belts. So if the streets are not safe for women at night, the right solution is not women should not be out at night. The streets should be made safer. So it's the right solution that we need to identify. Okay. Uh, I'll come to Uday on this now. Uh, we've met very briefly once before, but something when uh, uh, you, on your speech, something that attracted me was that you said women have to participate more. And EV is a new upcoming uh, industry. And... I still do not, like, renewable energies have been here for a while. EV is the new upcoming buzzword. Do you still feel that the representation of women, even in that sector, because it's another core STEM sector, is still less? And what do you think can be a good contributor to bring more women on, on boarding to EVs? Because uh, a funny thing that I have noticed is, uh, can you get uh, Himani ji, please? She's already there. She called me. Sorry for this interruption, yeah. So, uh, see, you know what? The EV scooter, the two-wheeler, the low-end ones, uh, are always bought for women as a second or uh, as a second vehicle at home. So, you know, women are the biggest beneficiaries as of now for the EVs. But how do you bring them more onto participation on behind the scenes in the manufacturing, in the design, and in the contribution to actually the sector? Uh, thank you. Hello. 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 Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, you know, it's a great, great event. And I think, you know, um, see, I, I've been listening to everybody and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really bold. You know, I, I just say what's on my mind always. I don't think we need to discuss, uh, you know, about I think we live in a world where women are equal. There is no shadow of a doubt. Right. And I think, you know, this safety issue, um, you know, all of these conversations in production, mining, manufacturing, um, you know, I think, you know, I'll just tell you what I'm doing. I've made a commitment and, you know, we run significant, you know, we, we are one of the largest steel processors in this country. Um, you know, we've got about 14 factories. I have committed by 2035 or half 50% of my staff have to be women. Okay. It has to be. There's no, this is not just something that, you know, I think people are fools. Women work. I'm, I was, a, I was an analyst at Wall Street, right? women work more efficiently than men. I'm a businessman. And whatever gives me more efficiency, I take them. I think half this country has lost the plot because I have watched women working in my organization. We've got women working in our factories, right? We, we are very significant players also now in the auto space. I'll come back to the EV part. And the women that run the, the machines, 
they produce, and you know, I was an analyst at Wall Street, so this is all I do is watch numbers, data. Data usually never lies unless you fudge them, it's all right, but the data is what is everything. I see a productivity of a woman on a machine on those eight to 10 hours, much, much more than any guy. The guys are all here and there chit-chatting because that woman knows that when she has those eight to 10 hours, she's got to go home. And in our culture, I mean, you know, I've spent enough time between US, Europe, you know, pretty much all over the world in Asian, that the woman has to go and do other jobs, right? And I think the, 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 the women are more responsible. Now, coming back to the EV industry, I am seeing young men and women, both, but women specifically coming out with new ideas. Guys, this is not the India of 10 years ago. And I'll be honest, sorry, mate, no, no disrespect to you. Europe is, is, uh, is, is a great place to go and hang out and visit. But the, the, the growth is here. It's in ASEAN. And I think we've got such, you know, I, I talk about a lot in my speeches on, uh, you know, Nari Shakti. You know, it's not just a word. We have got such a large, diverse women force in this country. And I, I, I don't know about anybody else, whether they care or not. I am going to take advantage of all of these smart men and women. And in EV, we have got engineers, computer scientists, you know, technicians. We have got people working in all over our industry. And I think what I want to see, and, I, and that's why I said at these conferences, you know, and I, I'm like you, uh, Madam, I speak quite, you know, at, at many, many conferences. I want to see more women. I want them to be more bold. I want them to take this initiative because they have, they are smarter than us. And I think the opportunity and the environment, this country is giving you an environment. And I think, you know, obviously there are, you know, one of the things you talk about of safety of women, we've got to teach our kids whether your young kids or your, you know, daughters and sons, to respect women. You know, we talk about, um, you know, um, you know, of Swatch Bharat. It's not Modi ji's job to clean this country. It is our job to clean this country. And what I want to say is, you know, we should not have women to be scared of traveling from Noida to Gurga or wherever. You know, I think, I think that is wrong. And I think, where does that start? That starts at home. That we go back and teach our kids to respect women as equals. And I think, look, I'm not going to complain about, you know, this or that. I'm going to do this myself. And I think, you know, I talk about, you know, I'm in the football, mate. I don't know, you know, which, which team you support, but I'm an old football mate. And, you know, in Liverpool, there's a sign that says you'll never walk alone. But for me, I walk alone. And in India, you know, I spent 35, 40 years abroad. I'm here. I'm going to make a difference, even whether I make a unicorn or not. But I think if we leave women behind, and again, guys, I'm not trying to be a politician. I have no goals for that. But I think that there is a huge amount of opportunity where we've got the most powerful women in this country. And whether they come from a village, whether they come from Ranchi, Uttarakhand, I don't care. I think, and I'll tell you what just happened recently in you know, this incident, I think laws need to be made. You've got to punish. I think, you know, in the United States or Europe, you drink drive, you're going to lose your license. Anybody doesn't respect women needs to be punished, and there has to be laws for that. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a bit passionate about this, so uh, you know, I just maybe use too much of my time. Right. Would I, would I, uh, I like the most, you know, that you said you would like to have women to make more business, and this is, I think, uh, amazing. That's really amazing. <laughs> that that was a very powerful message out there, and uh, let's go to Urvish now. Uh, Orvish has been in the forefront uh, of the solar industry on EPCs and and uh, what do you think Orvish is required to change the landscape for having more women on the board? Yeah, so first of all, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I think that we are in this uh, sector specifically me into solar energy sector, which is one of the most, uh, I would say, uh, growing, productive, and most argumentative sector uh, prevailing in India. That is what I believe. And uh, no offense, but you know, I mean, women are born, uh, I mean, they're dead good in arguments. So I mean, it's a, it's a match made in heaven for them, uh, like clean tech and women. Uh, this is what I feel. Second of all, you know, I clearly, uh, you know, uh, am with Mr. Uday when he said that women are more, you know, productive. 
because there are two examples which have come across, uh, which uh, which I have come across personally. Uh, one. Uh, and let me tell you that as women, we believe more in that cause. I'm sure all of you would agree. But once you're a woman, you really feel that cause of doing something which is going to make a difference to today as well as for the generations to come. You know, climate change is not something which is going to come, say, 10 years later. It's coming right onto your face, correct? And I think even being a parent, you know, for that matter, whoever of you have daughters, sisters in the industry out there, you would always have that heartfelt intention of making things better, making things good for them. And uh, I think it's high time. We just have to stay the course, bring what value we have, we add it into the table and we take the stride ahead. So, you know, that's very important. And then uh, it's also important that once we hire the early talents, we are also giving them a good culture where you are valuing them, nurturing them. And how this can be done is the ground implementation. Like, of course, you would have some hi-fi policies, but 10 years back the line, if you asked me when I visited site, maybe having a washroom nearby was a problem. Once, you know, in fact, before the session, we uh, were talking of the maternity phase. So, you know, it's not something which is, uh, you have to understand all the aspects from the employer aspect, from the employee aspect, how things are there understanding what's the unique characteristic and then designing the work accordingly. And also Thomas and Rashi, I think one very important part, uh, since we also have the government uh, representation here, one very important part is that we are undergoing the energy transition, the kind of jobs, the kind of skill set that is required is going to be different. And we need to train more and more women and when we say it has to, it, it's not essentially just the admin job or say some marketing job. We need skilled workforce for that. And then ultimately how you uh, build the complete culture around it. In fact, uh, it's, you know, it's time that we go ahead, not staying in India alone, going to global, taking those best practices, the lessons learned, customizing it to India because India, we are a large demographic market and uh, the next, you know, the world is looking up to us. So it's up to us as the relevant stakeholders uh, to pass on these lessons learned, to have those practices in place which are implemented on ground and seeing more and more, uh, I would rather say diverse candidates rather than just men and women. So it has to be diverse, different people out there and, you know, putting the best uh, foot across. Thank you. Wow, that was nice. So now moving on to Satya Prakash ji for his inputs on this. Yeah, thank you. Thank because you. I would like to also make some comments uh, to Shivani. As a person uh, who is uh, homeless since uh, almost 20 years, uh, you know, living in many countries and uh, visiting like 60 countries, yes, I fully agree that we should speak about diversity, yes? So there is a place for everybody uh, in the business. And uh, I also don't agree with you guys because you are always speaking about transition, transition. It's not transition, it's transformation. So we transform the world. And I loved uh, actually uh, your comment that we should think, and this is, uh, I think it should be done with the ministry, what will be the jobs of the future? And what is amazing with India, that India will be, you know, the mine of the new talents, yes? Because India will have the most growing uh, population. Yes. So maybe it would be interesting actually to think about not transition from the old energy to the new, transformation to the new world with EVs, uh, with artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, etc. And to think which jobs will be in the future and uh, we should promote these jobs towards women. Do you agree? This is India's decade and it is India who has to put the change on the global map. And if India is not going to do it now, it's a doomsday. So everybody sitting here, here, and in this entire conference and exhibition, it is our responsibility. And we are the torchbearers of this transformation. We are the torchbearers of the change. We are going to transform this world. To you. Together, of course, because together we are stronger. <laughs> stronger together. <laughs> Yeah, so Thomas, I'll just add a very quick, small point to this, okay? While even uh, Uday was mentioning that, you know, women uh, do go home and then they have their own tasks to do and all. 
it's a very very important message to all my female colleagues my friends over here that please do not feel the pressure i've seen with many younger generations if you you take yourself as representation of the complete community and how you behave and do things and so on do not take that pressure we have our own inherent qualities which are going to help us so if after going home you are doing the second shift it's absolutely fine you have to build your support system uh, if you have multiple tasks you are also also multitasking correct that's a very the time management multitasking there are lot many beautiful qualities and somebody mentioned arguments also so <laughs> there's also <laughs> they are better but again i mean since we are on this forum uh, i have to tell my fellow friend that uh, the usage of language again is very important so you know i would really feel delighted if he said that we are better in negotiating we are better at convincing that that's just on a lighter note not just on a lighter note <laughs> correct so so uh, that's there i mean you know we have those skills and then we should be delighted about it and take it ahead yeah thank you that was just on a lighter note cool 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 Thanks, yeah, let's hear it from Satya Prakash. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Rashi. Uh, let me tell you that uh, Smart Power India is a subsidiary of Rockefeller Foundation, and uh, we are working since 2015 uh, promoting DRE-based uh, sustainable business model for promoting livelihood, rural livelihood especially, and uh, uh, you can say energy transitioning or in this uh, uh, world transforming uh, in the, basically the rural areas. So till now we have got uh, somewhere around 600 uh, mini grids in UP, Bihar, Jharkhand, and Nagaland. promoted by uh, 13 different esco partners and uh, since last 6 month we are also into the rooftop solar space where actually we are exploring that how the rooftop solar can actually support the msme sectors uh, which uh, the uh, mnr is also focusing on uh, uh, and the, we are trying to experience that what changes it's actually bringing in the rural livelihoods uh, coming to the topic of uh, women empowerment i think that uh, I, uh, this is the right platform where i, I can share that uh, the kind of experience or the observation we had in terms of the women empowerment uh, it, uh, related with the clean energy so uh, when we talk about the women empowerment i think that uh, in spi we used to define with the two different uh, indicators the first is uh, that uh, the sense of ownership and the second is that uh, of how good you are in actually in sub the sense of getting the decision making power within the family or within the society and uh, when we started working in the rural areas what we found that whenever we are going for the medical connections Uh, we found that almost like 100% connections, discom connection in the rural areas are in the name of the male or male member of the uh, family. So when we started giving the mini grid connection, we started talking about that if that can be taken by the woman uh, member of the family, that actually gives a huge sense of ownership to the woman member of the family. Then second, that how she is getting benefited. We found that once the connection has been made from the solar power to the uh, household or maybe to the uh, woman run enterprises. there are many women who started shifting their jobs or you can say that uh, the kind of activity they are engaged in they are exploring new activities like suppose you talk about agriculture initially the women are only engaged for the weeding or maybe like sowing activities but once you have actually provided the solar irrigation now they are finding it lot more convenient for themselves when they are also engaged in the irrigation activities it's very convenient for them similarly i think all the activities which are totally based on the dg gen set as a power backup in the remote areas now with the support of the clean tech or clear uh, solar energy or the clean based energy uh, in the rural areas now they are finding it lot more convenient to lust, uh, i mean run those enterprises like even the atta chakki oil expeller or even uh, uh, you can say the pulverizers so we have got almost like more than 400 such examples where we have seen that the woman have started exploring those in, uh, enterprising activities and they are finding it lot more convenient in terms of security and safety when we have actually supported almost like 80 villages with uh, the solar lights and uh, solar street lights we found that almost like uh, uh, and started ask uh, doing the impact survey we found that mostly the women are uh, in the uh, rural uh, uh, villages who are actually saying that they are usually impacted with that they are getting a huge sense of security and convenience once the uh, solar lights are there in the rural villages they are not only talking about themselves they are talking about the old age person who are there in the family they are talking about their children who are feeling lot more convenient in the outside uh, playing outside and all so uh, while actually correlating and understanding that how we define the women empowerment with the access of uh, clean energy in the villages we are finding that 
most of the women who are actually getting a huge sense of ownership, they feel that this is the energy which is actually getting generated out uh, uh, at their rooftop or maybe I think uh, uh, as the connection is in, in their name, they find it like a lot more convenient uh, uh, owning that energy and using it for their own consumptive or productive purpose. Thank you. Wow, that's nice. Um, moving on to Shikha. You have been from, into various industries. So, uh, you know, like you were from, you have been into this exhibition, right? On some, as an organizer, some time back on this part, six years back. Then you moved on to the re uh, renewable energies. And then, you know, now you are with international companies working on the renewable energy sector. So, how do you think your transition has been? And does it give you a different edge? over others and how has your being how your journey been from the different sectors and how do you summarize as a role of a woman out there thank you rashi it's such a pleasure first of all to be in the same panel and honor really to be in the same panel as you and ritu ma'am like i have had the pleasure of you know sort of being on the other side and uh, it's such a delight so i mean i would say that one thing that we have not touched upon is the ambition in women so as a small town with the Pradesh girl, you know, I uh, was ambitious and uh, I took opportunities and I was proactive. So uh, sometimes, you know, it is something that we are afraid of. We don't ask for things. So I think women should like really ask for opportunities because they deserve them. Also, uh, you know, my experience, uh, like I've been in the industry for six uh, years, almost six and a half years. And I can say that. It's one of those industries which has given uh, a lot of wings and also a lot of support to me because probably because we are such a small number. So <laughs> there's always the sense of, you know, okay, you know, let's retain them also. Uh, you know, I got married, I, I had a baby and I'm still here. So it's all in a, in a, in a great way. But of course, I would say that, uh, you know, every woman has a potential energy like sun. Like we need to like really harness it. Yeah, and we need to convert that into kinetic energy now. Exactly. Also, the, uh, the ratio in India is very dismal. You know, the formal workforce for women in India is probably the lowest in Southeast Asian countries. I'm sure everybody would agree to it, right? And it is like not a great place to be with South Sudan and Nigeria, you know, when it comes to gender ratio rankings, like, uh, and, as Ritu Ma'am said earlier, right, retention is a key to keeping women uh, because of their other duties. We need to have policies which are supportive enough when they go for maternity leaves, come back, and of course rejoin the workforce, and also uh, ensuring that you know they continue to to strive. So that's that's what I would say. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Rika. That was very nice talking about ambition. And with ambition, I know a very powerful woman sitting right in the audience there who is ambitious who has done good work in the industry i'd want mrinaldi to speak something about it please give the mic to mrinaldi um, thank you everyone thanks uh, rashi and it's great to see you all here um, and uh, excellent points from all of you and, you know, agree on uh, all of them. Uh, so uh, I just want to talk about uh, my experience and observations of what I've seen in the industry, right? So uh, when you look at uh, women in, in solar or in clean tech specifically, uh, we look at which segment are we talking about? So uh, in general, if you see, you have the top layer, the top management, and then you have the middle management, more of back office work, uh, all of that. And like how uh, Ms. Thomas in the beginning had the video where one of the women was saying, uh, you know, it doesn't, you know, clean energy employment doesn't necessarily mean in the technical side, it could be marketing, admin, finance, etc. And then you have the field work, and then you have, as a manufacturing industry, uh, we're looking at people on the production floor. Uh, now, if you take the first few layers, when you talk about the top management, the middle, anything to do with the back office work, that is something that is very easily uh, addressable, right? Uh, in, in my view, what I see is that 
those are uh, those have problem statements which can be uh, resolved uh, with a lot of uh, support from uh, you know both from the industry uh, breaking the glass ceiling all of that can happen now um, since we are also in the process of you know setting up a manufacturing plant and i'm looking at having at least one shift run completely by women on the production quality maintenance uh, be it plumber on call or electrician on call i wanted to be a woman and we are looking at um, where do we find them so the problem that we see here is uh, multiple on multiple fronts so one is do we have women who are iti fitters who are in iti we don't see any even i don't know how many iti courses have women no so one second is okay so i take a be graduate or a diploma graduate woman put her on the production floor uh, is she willing what is her mindset is she willing to be there okay yeah mostly yes with the right motivation right talks yes but uh, would be what about her family what about her support system would be a young woman who who's in her early 20s yet to be married but still the society the way we are we are governed majorly by our families by head of the households and would that family the support system be ready to uh, allow the woman the girl to come on a let's say first shift might be okay will will they be okay to allow in the second or the third shift then fourth comes what we have all been talking about the safety and the security which as a country as each and every individual as a parent as a sibling should ensure instill in you know people that we influence so uh when we look at this problem it is uh, something that we need to do um, you know has as a whole uh, one is from the government side uh, it's giving the right infrastructure and security second is change management uh, in the candidates in the women themselves and change management from the family how do you address that so that is where i see as a major problem and how do we change the mindset of the people who actually you know uh, influence this person to be employed so wow thank you thank you ranalini for summing it up and you know bringing all the four agendas uh, and the four problem areas to highlight that's very nice uh, yeah you you can add but let first ritu add when she was speaking and apart from what we can have in terms of policies and what the government can do and what organizations can do and what schools and colleges can do there was a problem statement people allowing their adult daughters sisters wives or whatever right uh, we are government we have to be allowed we are not empowered it happens i have a senior lady in my office uh her father does not allow her to have overnight trips for work unless there are more people going uh, yeah, yeah. people are not allowed to work the night shift so it, it's also this, this decades or oh, sorry decades centuries of patriarchy with the kind of you know you're almost brainwashed from the moment you're born into what your duties are this an other as underlying statement that all of us made a woman has several other responsibilities i'm sure a lot of the men sitting here also have other responsibilities right but this whole assumption that the domestic responsibility of course child bearing is going to be a female's responsibility until we see some miraculous changes in the future but but this whole assumption of what a woman's work is you know where she fits into society and i think you made a very great point shikha don't like you know do not you don't need to be a trailblazer or an example for others do what works for yourself right i think we need to uh, be more empowered and the greatest achievement would be if we stopped having the need for such forums in the future right we don't have we don't have a forum for men who wear ties or you know men who have blonde hair versus 6 uh, feet tall or not so you know there are only where there is discrimination you still have racism exists so you have discussions around racism gender discrepancy exists so you have these discussions i hate to be a part of a panel simply to break it from being a manel and if i ever find that that's the reason i've been invited it it 
it is really uh, you know it hurts at many levels so with that i think i i want to add what i'm just, saying i just like to add one thing so they're like, saying something I mean, now. We, we we talk about and you know i'm i'm, I'm a big martin luther king man uh, you know i've studied him very clearly um, you know i have a dream and the dream that i have is you know we talk about you know prime minister talks about a 10 trillion somebody's talking about a 30 trillion economy let's make sure the dream is that 10 years from now I would say 60% or 70% of women entrepreneurs are driving this country. And this discussion of a permission or safety never happens. And that's, I honestly, I want to be the minority. I hopefully, I'm on a panel where it says men empowering the clean, and it's not the discussion of women. And I think <laughs> India has an opportunity. Of for this. You know, we have an opportunity here in this country where we have. You know, the, I believe India is where China was in 1999. We have a growth pattern. We don't want our young men and women to leave this country to go to Canada, United States, or Australia. They come here and build it. And I think we got to all work together. And if you as a woman want to be bold, I think as a brother, as a friend, as a father, I got to support it and say, go, go, you go get it. So I'm sorry, I'm being, I think we've got to stop. And hopefully the dream is that apart from being a 10 trillion economy or 30 trillion economy, we've got you women running this country and I'm on panels where there's 20 women and I'm one guy. So I'm hoping that's the future. Thank you so much. <laughs> so you wanted to say something. Can we please give him the mic? Thank you, thank you. Rashi, uh, first of all, congratulations for not only moderating the session, but also being a live example of how women can be on multiple fronts. If I list not only renewable energy and consultancy and in many fronts, it will be very, very long. So uh, my uh, input, not question, is is to Shivani's um, in, um, description about toilets. I don't know how important it is, but on highways when we are traveling, it is very difficult for asked to find a toilet so uh, if this message goes somewhere to women in child development and to nhai please have toilets on the haryana route because i mean i was the victim of this and i have no shame in saying this openly that i had to sit for three hours without and you know you have all these petrol pumps and you're supposed to have a good toilet and a clean toilet it was not there it was such an embarrassment and please if this is going to the NHAI, to all the BPCLs, to the HPCLs, IOCLs, please make good toilets. It's a harassment for women out there. My, my point was exactly that, that the next, uh, next round of or the next generation of stations which are going to come up, one of the miniature which our Honorable Minister of Road Transport and Highway yesterday opened would have not only a clean biodegradable toilet, but also a child and women room along with the medical facilities for the women who will be traveling inside an air conditioned solar powered spherical room. So that's something which is coming up next to you. One of the miniature is there in the Guru Gram and a few more are coming up Delhi, Jaipur and Delhi, Agra. Anything more comes up where we need to bring women in the, in the ecosystem of electric mobility or solar, we are more than happy to integrate that. Rashi also happens to be our uh, NHEB working group member. So we are more than welcome to take any suggestions through her and integrate it. Maybe uh, I see a lot of people drive between Delhi, any places. Women driving, but what, what uh, Uday said is very less. So how to increase it? There are many components which will be required. We as a facilitation partner, at least on couple of uh, hubs or stations who are almost more than an acre, and 250 people working on each station, we can definitely accommodate safety and other uh, aspects so that women can add to the driving ecosystem. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah, just a very quick one. So I'm glad that, you know, you brought that point up and when somebody was, uh, I think Ritu was mentioning that we want to tackle the ground problem, you know, the greatest of minds around you you have a heartfelt conversation with them that, you know, what stops you from stepping out? And these are the small but very, very relevant things where I feel as a nation, we have many things to be put into place, be it washrooms, be it safety, be it simple things like, you know, something on sanitation. People should be comfortable and, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to have it as a key takeaway, you as a manager, as a teammate, 
should give that congenial that comfortable environment that if somebody is getting uncomfortable around you how do they talk it out and it's very normalized you know there's no hush hush oh she talked about the washroom look at the what forum and you know what see those are the real life problems of the greatest minds on earth so that's how we make it more comfortable we nurture them we give the place to shine and then see the magic happen thank you okay so actually we, we, the time time is up unfortunately so just uh, we are making a very short summary so first of all i would like to welcome hopefully new member of our empowering crew and hub <laughs> And I really liked this discussion and uh, what we would like, because discussion is great, but the best is action, yes? So uh, from our side, from Kintech Business Club, uh, through Dr. Rashi, we'll provide contacts with uh, women entrepreneurs around the world, as we do uh, uh, so far. I think we should uh, start also cooperating with the government, with the ministry. So we'll be happy to also provide you colleagues from other countries who are working with the ministries so maybe we can think amongst ministries about some some programs yes uh, rashi yes and uh, last but not least i would like to uh, thank to all the speakers it was a really pleasure to have you together with us and uh, we'll make a photo family photo at the end and don't forget world cannot exist without both women but also men because together we are stronger so since to get since together we are stronger what we now have to do is now as he said we need to do some action so the action plan is that if each one of us can make one significant change in first ourselves and then try to propagate that change into people around us very soon we will make this place a safer better peaceful and a happier place for our existence and with our existence i include both men and women into this so let's make a significant contribution towards changing and transforming this to a clean tech decade Thank you so much, everyone, for such a wonderful, for being such a wonderful audience. My lovely panelists out there, thank you so much for everybody. Hey, Dr. Rashi, just I want to add one. You thing. want to add something? One just small thing, which is called break the bias. So how do we break the bias? Girls don't make good leaders. Girls are not good at maths. Women should, women with children should be at home full time with children. If not, is damaging to children. But then if you see the research, it says that working women children are more likely to hold higher level jobs. So how is it possible that? So uh, the summary of this discussion, what I have understood from the uh, entire thing, I was just summarizing it. At four level, we have to make initiative and take action as Dr. Rashi was saying. Number first, at the corporate level. So corporate level, it is very, so uh, Shikha ji is also there, Ritulal ji is also there. Even if we comply all the laws of India, there the work is done actually. So if women director is required under section 149 of the companies, like do it. If compliance, voluntary action is required, do it. If maternity benefit has to be provided, do it. If factories act is to be applied and toilets have to be given, do it. If equal remuneration act is there, please give equal remun remuneration. The problem is, you know if, what Raj, we don't do it. We just have to do it. It's all written actually. So first level is corporate level. Second level is entrepreneurship level, which Dr. Rashi is leading. So in entrepreneurship level, I see that World Bank credit line is equal for everyone, men and women. It's not done. If, if you see the default rate, the default rate in men is 12% and women is 3%. So I would like Dr. Shivani, who has worked in this World Bank project, maybe 0.5% concession on interest rate is given to women entrepreneurs, that will be very useful. And VC funds, only 1% VC fund is available to women. So that has to change actually. So at entrepreneurship level, that is what we need to do. Third is policy initiative level. So uh, I see Dr. Shivani Sharma is also in policy. Mani Khurana is also in policy. So we need to more women in legal field, in policy field, in standards field. Law, policy and standards are three driving factors which can change 1.4 million, billion people across India and they have a major impact. So we have a 
representative of mnr is also with million dollars coming in and amit and is showing me that we, we are thing yeah. yes we are up here we were winding yeah, yeah. up the session last <laughs> no no last 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 is now, it's you important. have to deal with amit it's human to human it's last is human to human which thomas is driving and that human to human we have to break the bias break the bias so, thank you so much so now that all the biases are broken we are all empowered out here so let's let let's just wind up this cover thank you everybody thank you let's have a quick photograph